Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Daily Disciple channel. My name is Isaac and today we're going to be talking about um, should Christians get depression? And this topic really originated from just the vastness, I think, of depression in our culture nowadays. For me personally, um, yeah, I've had bouts of what you might call depression, but it's kind of a term that we're kind of confused about we're like okay you're depressed who has depression how do we react to that if you have depression how do you deal with that should Christians get depression there's lots of questions around this topic and sometimes we may feel ill-equipped to really talk with our friends about it and you know really help people that are experiencing it so there's kind of two topics here um, one kind of how do you deal with it personally and then how do we as Christians um, really respond to it and treat it and understand it and I think that's going to be the take of this video um, there's going to be another video hopefully soon kind of with the other like how do you deal with it personally what are some things um, you can do but for now I just want to kind of understand should Christians get depression what is depression and let's dig into that now Okay, so I'm reading here from Google because we all know Google is the best place to get information and it's always trustworthy. Uh, that's a joke, that's sarcasm. Okay, anyway, this is the definition. Feeling of severe despondency or dejection. Um, synonyms with it is mel melancholy, misery, sadness, unhappiness, sorrow, woe, gloom. It's this kind of idea and this, just this kind of concept that you're just like, oh, you're just down, you're just heavy. It, you just you kind of I don't know compl uh, not complacent but despondent in a way um, this idea that yeah you you just you it's something's not right there right something's not right and it's not just like oh I'm sad because um, you know my favorite sports team lost the game it's something more than that so we know there's some components to it I just want to point some things out that I think are um, not necessarily causes because that's what I want us to get away from in regard to this issue of, of depression because for us for somebody like me it can be really tempting to just say okay look in your life figure out what you're doing wrong bingo okay it that's the cause that's why you're depressed but I think with depression and a lot of other issues it's important to look and understand that it's not just one cause it's not just one issue um, and we'll we'll talk about that more in a little bit so in regard to okay why why is this person experiencing depression I think there's a number of factors at work or can be at work and the first ones I like to go to and I think they're the ones that we have the most control over if I can put it that way um, and I want to be honest in in saying this I'm not an expert on this stuff and I'd never approach this channel or any of the topics on this channel as an expert because I'm not I'm just a young guy trying to figure this stuff out doing some research I'm really exploring what it means to be a disciple and really pulling in a lot of different um, thoughts and ideas um, and focusing on what the Bible says and biblical truth and all that kind of stuff so I'm not an expert in this um, so that's just a little precursor um, I'm gonna explain some stuff that I've read and uh, hopefully it's helpful to you so going back to what I was just saying before I made that little interruption um, I think the one of the the causes or some of the the impacting factors um, on our own soul are what we believe about ourselves what we believe about others and what we believe about God and often these things are lies that we believe about ourselves lies we believe about others lies we believe about God you think about um, how those lies can shape your mood and the way that you live life um, if you believe God is just out there to get you that there really is no hope in the universe because you know God doesn't care about you that could cause what what we could call depression but these lies can really impact the way uh, we live our lives if you just feel like oh it's hopeless nothing is gonna work out for me everything is against me people hate me um, you know I'm, I'm a terrible person I'm, I suck um, you know these things can really impact the way we see ourselves and where I like to start is our 
relationship with God. How do we see God? How do we see ourselves before God? That's where I like to start in terms of this conversation. Um, because when we do have a distorted perspective of that relationship, yeah, that can really contribute to feelings of depression and, and, um, and anxiety and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's one area and one area of factors that we can look at. Another kind of area of factors um, that kind of contribute to this uh, or possibly contribute to a kind of depression is this idea of soul and the areas of, of hurt that have occurred at the soul level. We think about um, you know people that have been abused or really have gone through some heartache or some kind of loss in some way. Um, these things have a, a deep impact at a soul level. Um, they're not just things that stay at the surface. So it's understandable how these things could really contribute to yeah, depression and sorrow and sadness and and just kind of a lifestyle of just, or a season of just being down and being sad. Um, those are some other factors that we should really understand. The last kind of section of factors um, is body. And I think this is the one that we, maybe as Christians, um, don't like to talk about as much because it's a little bit confusing to us and it's not as easy. I said earlier that we really like to, you know, look for one cause um, because if we find that one cause, then we've solved the, the problem and we've, we've found a solution and all this kind of thing. But in terms of the body and things like um, imbalances, hormonal imbalances, just brokenness overall inside the body that causes the our mood to be shifted or causes us to be leaning one way in terms of oh i have a more of a tendency toward this kind of depression or anxiety um it, we should acknowledge that we should understand that um if you have more tendencies toward anxiety um, i'm not saying it's only on your biological makeup but that could really be a factor and we should really begin to understand that so is depression just a sin issue is it just an issue that we just need to shape up and start, you know, um, believing God and then we'll stop having depression, we'll feel better and all this kind of thing? I don't think it's just a sin issue. It can be, as anything can be a sin, anxiety can be a sin issue, depression can be a sin issue. But I think what we need to be going into it, especially with our friends or if you're experiencing yourself, is this idea, okay, look, there can be many factors at work here. Let's really begin to um, methodically understand what we're going through and what other people are going through um, because there can be lots of factors at work it's not just about well believe God and you'll feel better because there's brokenness on the inside just like there's brokenness on the outside we get sick we break our leg we get a twisted ankle and just like the inside we have you know tendencies toward depression and feeling sad and and these thoughts that aren't good and as much as we try to reframe our perspective um, there's healing that needs to take place there and as Christians I think we should be the first ones that should say yes let's help that healing take place because we know God can heal and he does heal um, but just like he does not heal every um, you know outside physical ailment he doesn't heal necessarily every inside ailment that we experience before um, you know we go to heaven and there's things that we have to battle with on earth that we have to struggle with that's going to be painful um, as a result of the brokenness that we have so I think I want to just kind of give you that over overview of those different factors I'm not trying to overemphasize any one of them it's just a matter of understanding kind of all of them and not that that was an extensive list um, but I think that gives us a good framework for understanding, look, there's lots of causes at work here and Christians can experience depression. A lot of them do. And for us, as their friends and as people in their churches and as their family members, I think it's important that we go into these situations of conversation with love and grace and not this attitude, well, we gotta figure out and we gotta fix you right now because it's not that easy but we know we don't have to live in bondage even though we struggle with things on earth inside and out we know that we can continue to battle and call upon God to help us a famous past preacher whose name was Charles Spurgeon uh, they called him the Prince of 
preachers, um, he experienced a lot of depression throughout his life. Somebody that was so committed to preaching God's word faithfully, to speaking into the culture in his day, and yet he experienced depression. And I think that's an important um, example that we should really, okay, take in and not understand, oh, well, if you have depression, you're weak. Or if you have mental issues, you're kind of, you know, lower than us because we gotten past that stuff. No, we can understand that, look, we all have our issues. We all have the areas of our life that are broken. And God continues to restore those areas and bring those things under his dominion. And we can continue to call on his name because Christians have anxiety. Christians have depressions, depression. Christians have emotional hurt. But we know where we can go for healing. We know where we can go. And... I want to just encourage you, if you're struggling with these things, if you know someone who is, begin that process of going to Him, of seeking Him in these things, of perceiving His presence in your life, and really begin that process. If this video helped you in some way, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. I'm putting out two videos a week, all helping you become an authentic, inspired, and passionate disciple of Christ. So please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.